it never fails. The minute you decide you're going to start eating better or trying to lose weight, you find yourself thinking about food all the time. It's annoying, right? Believe me, I get it. In fact, when I think back to all the million and one diets that I tried before I was finally able to lose weight and get healthy for life, the number one reason that I failed was because I was just too damn hungry all the time. And frankly, who has time to be thinking about food all the time? I certainly didn't. And so inevitably, I'd always end up giving in and falling off the wagon and eating the whole bag of Doritos or the entire tub of ice cream that I knew was stashed at the bottom of the freezer. But have you ever stopped to think about what's actually going on to make you feel so hungry? Because believe it or not, not all hunger, not all hunger is created equal. Let me say that part again. Because believe it or not, not all hunger is created equal. And if you're ready to get serious about changing your habits, then it's important to understand what's actually going on so that you can also better understand how to respond. That's why in today's episode, I'm going to walk you through the different types of hunger and explain not only how to identify them, but what to actually do about it when that craving strikes. Welcome to the Feel Better Live Free podcast brought to you by Thinlicious. I'm your host, Ruth Sukup, and here we'll talk about everything from the science of weight loss to practical tips for making your health a priority in the midst of a busy life. It's a little bit nerdy, a little bit funny, and a little bit revolutionary. So buckle up, friend, because it's about to get real. Hey there, and welcome back to the Feel Better Live Free podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruth Sukup, and I'm the founder of Thinlicious and the creator of the Thin Adapted System, as well as the New York Times bestselling author of seven books. And I also understand exactly how it feels to be struggling to lose weight and get healthy because let me tell you, I was on that struggle train for years and years and years. I tried every diet under the sun, literally every one of them, Weight Watchers, Noom, South Beach, F-Factor, Healthy Belly Diet, Fat Flush Diet, gosh, green smoothies, juice cleanses, you name it, I have probably tried it. The only thing I didn't try was Ozempic, but that's only because it didn't exist yet. But believe me, had it been around and had everybody been talking about it, I probably would have been first in line despite all of the risks and side effects that I now know about. Because honestly, I was so desperate to fix that piece of my life. And if you're currently struggling with this, you know what I mean, because it literally impacts everything else that you do. It's hard to feel good in your clothes. You're always self-conscious and self-critical. You start avoiding pictures or even wanting to look in the mirror. You start saying no. You start hiding. It basically just starts to steal your confidence in your life. And it wasn't until I decided to take a totally different approach that things really turned around for me. And it's mostly because I finally stopped looking for a quick fix, another crash diet. And instead, I decided to do real research into the science of weight loss and into why we gain weight in the first place. And honestly, what I discovered absolutely shocked me because it is so different than everything that we've ever been told about what's healthy and what's not healthy and what makes us lose weight and what makes us gain weight. Our whole lives, we've basically been told to eat less and exercise more and that weight loss is just calories in and calories out, but that's not true, not even a little bit, especially for women and especially for women over 40. Because the thing that regulates our weight isn't calories, it's hormones. And so as I started to change the way that I eat in a way that restored balance to my hormones and reversed insulin resistance and healed my gut, the weight just started to come off without dieting, without drugs, and without making myself miserable. I lost 40 pounds in six months, and for the first time ever in my entire adult life, I didn't just gain it all right back. I've easily maintained that weight loss for years now. And let me tell you, friends, after struggling with this piece of my life for so long, it really does feel like freedom. And it is why I am so freaking passionate about this work. It's why I started Thinlicious in this podcast, because I genuinely cannot help but want to share it and to help other women find that same freedom. Suffice to say, if you are struggling right now, I get it. Oh, friend, you have no idea how much I get it because I have been there too. But I also know 
that there is a better way. There is hope. There is freedom. There is a solution. And we're going to dive into today's topic in just a second, but I do first want to say a couple of quick things. First of all, if you are new to Thinlicious, if you're new to this podcast, and you want to understand more about how our program works and especially why it works, then please be sure to grab our free guide. It is called Flip the Switch, and it is super meaty and super helpful, and it will walk you through the basics and show you how to get started. And you can get that for free at thinlicious.com slash guide. Once again, that's thinlicious.com slash guide. The second thing that you need to know, whether you are new or not, is that today is a big day, guys, because we are finally spilling the beans on the big, 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 like super big, huge project my team and I have been working on behind the scenes. It is basically a game changer, and I am so freaking excited that I can hardly stand it. So if you are listening to this podcast early, like as soon as it popped up, then be sure to pop into our Health Rebel Facebook group at 12 p.m. Eastern time, or you can watch on Instagram. I'm going to try to stream live in both places. Hopefully that will work. Or if you can't make that, Uh, You know that you can tune in tomorrow for a special episode of this podcast where I will lay it all out for you. So if you can't make it today, you can wait till tomorrow. I will be doing a bonus episode of this podcast where I'll be talking all about it. But get excited because it is something really, 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 really good. And it's I'm not even joking when I say it's going to be a game changer. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's dive in to the topic of the day, hunger, and what it actually means to be hungry. Because the reality is that a lot of what we think that we know about hunger is actually 100% wrong. And not only that, but this misunderstanding about what hunger actually is and what it means is, is one of the big reasons that a lot of us really struggle to lose weight and get healthy. Because think about it. When you get hungry, what do you do? What's your first instinct? If you're anything like me, if you're anything like most people, your first instinct is to reach for the closest and most convenient source of food, right? And usually that closest, most convenient source of food isn't exactly what you might call healthy. I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like cooking up a healthy meal. I want something to eat right now. So for most of us, it's generally some sort of unhealthy snack, chips or cookies or crackers or sugary candy bar or a soda or maybe a trip to the fast food drive through right? And that right there is the problem because when we're not really paying attention to what we're eating and we're not really in control of our hunger – that's when we end up making choices that don't actually align with our goals. And it's not because we're weak or because we don't have enough willpower or anything like that. It's simply because we don't always understand what hunger actually is, and we don't know how to identify the different types of hunger that we might be feeling. No one's ever taught us that, right? It's not something they teach in schools. It's not something that ever really gets talked about. All our doctor tells us is, oh, you should cut back or try to eat healthier or avoid salt, avoid red meat, right? Right. That's not exactly helpful advice, is it? But the more that I've learned about all this stuff, the more I keep wanting to learn. Knowledge is power. I truly believe that. That's why I'm so obsessed with sharing the science and and diving deeper into these different topics because I feel like it's kind of addictive. The longer that I'm on this journey, the more obsessed I become with understanding the science of how our bodies work and how what we put into our bodies affects our health. And I'll also be honest and admit that some of this stuff is not always easy to understand, right? I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a medical degree. So a lot of what I've learned, I've had to learn by reading books and articles and listening to doctors and experts explain it in a way that I can understand it and then try to explain it to you. And I I like doing that because I feel like I understand something more fully when I start talking about it and I start teaching it to other people. And that's actually one of the things that I love about this topic is that the more that you understand it, the more it all starts to make sense and the more it becomes so incredibly obvious that this is exactly what we should be doing. It becomes obvious that this is not a fad diet. This is not just a weight loss plan, but it's actually a total lifestyle and health transformation. But again, like I said, some of the science can be sometimes a little bit complex And so I think it's super important to really break it down into bite-sized pieces that are easy to understand so that you can start to connect those dots in a way that actually sinks in and makes sense. Because understanding hunger is probably one of the most important things that you can do when it comes to changing the way that you eat and, and just getting healthy. So let's start at the beginning. What is hunger? 
Because on the surface, that probably seems like a pretty simple question, right? Hunger is that feeling that you get when you need to eat. It's that gnawing, empty feeling in the pit of your stomach that just won't quit and has you dreaming of a big juicy cheeseburger or a giant plate of spaghetti or whatever it is that your favorite craving is, right? And I think for most of us, that's the way that we've probably always thought about hunger. It's why when we start to feel that way, we immediately think to ourselves, oh, I need to eat something, right? It's, it's, we almost get like panicky and desperate for something to fill that empty space inside of us. But the truth is that that's not actually what hunger is. That gnawing, empty feeling in the pit of your stomach is, is just one of the many symptoms of hunger. It's a physical reaction, a signal that your body sends to you to let you know that you need to eat something. But that's all it is, is it's a signal. And the problem is that we've become so conditioned to respond to that signal, so conditioned to think of hunger as simple, simply a physical need for food that we don't really pay attention to anything else. We don't take the time to think about what our bodies might actually be trying to tell us. We don't stop and ask ourselves, what kind of hunger is this? Is it physical hunger or is it something else? And as a result, we often find ourselves giving into that physical hunger and making choices that aren't always the best for our health. So if hunger isn't just a physical need for food, then what is it? Well, to put it simply, hunger is a biological response to a drop in blood sugar. It is your body's way of saying, hey, I need more fuel, right? Hunger is the way that your body communicates with you to tell you that it's time to eat. And here's the thing. Hunger isn't just a physical need for food. It is actually a complex system of signals and responses that involve both your brain and your body. And it's not just one thing. In fact, there are several different types of hunger, each with its own set of symptoms and signals. And so that's what we're going to be talking today. I'm going to walk you through the different types of hunger and how to recognize them so that you can make better choices about what to eat and what not to eat to keep yourself healthy and on track. Okay, so if hunger isn't just a physical need for food, then what are the other types of hunger that you should be aware of? What other signals might your body be sending that you don't even realize? Well, I'm glad you asked because that brings us to all the different types of hunger that I want to talk about today. And just to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert, they're probably not what you think. Although the first one probably is, right? The type one is physical hunger. So this is probably the most obvious type of hunger. This is the hunger that we're all most familiar with that gnawing, empty feeling in the pit of your stomach that just won't go away, right? It's the feeling that you get when you haven't eaten for a while and it feels like your stomach is literally eating itself. But physical hunger is more than just a stomach ache. It's often a full body experience, right? There's other symptoms that go along with it. You might feel lightheaded or dizzy. You might have trouble focusing or thinking clearly. You might feel weak or shaky or have a headache. And of course, you will feel that gnawing, empty feeling in your stomach like you could eat an entire cow. And that's because when you're experiencing physical hunger, your body is telling you that your blood sugar is low and that you need more fuel. It's a biological response to your drop in blood sugar and your body's way of saying, hey, give me food, right? And this is the type of hunger that's not necessarily a good idea to completely ignore, but it's also the type of hunger that can be addressed in the most healthy way possible if you're eating especially if you're eating like a low carb, high protein, high fat diet, like the one that we recommend, right? That's because if you're eating the right foods, meaning foods that are high in healthy fats and high in nutrient dense protein and low in carbohydrates, then your body is actually going to have plenty of fat stores to tap into during those times that you're experiencing true physical hunger. And in fact, this is one of the ways that your body is able to burn fat and lose weight more effectively when you're eating a healthy low carb diet, because When your body doesn't have any carbohydrates to use for energy, it will automatically turn to your fat stores and start burning fat for fuel instead of just the carbohydrates that you're feeding it. And that's actually a good thing. But that's the first one, physical hunger. And that brings us to the second type of hunger, which is what I like to call nutritional hunger. And this is the type of hunger that we experience when our bodies are lacking in essential nutrients like vitamins and minerals. And it's the It's different because it's the feeling that no matter how much you eat, it's never enough. So it's this constant craving for more food, even when you just ate an hour ago. And we've probably all experienced this type of hunger before as well, because it's the hunger that has us reaching for the bag of chips or the pint of ice cream, even after we've already eaten a huge meal. 
we think, oh, man, why can't I stop eating, right? But the reality is not that we can't stop eating. It's that our bodies are telling us that we need more nutrients. Because the, the reality is that when our bodies aren't getting the right nutrients, we feel hungry. And we keep eating, not because we're actually physically hungry, but because our bodies are trying to tell us that we need more of those essential vitamins and minerals. So how do you know if you're experiencing nutritional hunger? Well, there are a, key, a few key things to look for. First, you'll notice that you're constantly craving more food even when you just ate. Um, the second is that you'll probably feel sluggish and tired even after a good night's sleep, right? Like you're always tired. And finally, you might also notice that you're experiencing other symptoms of nutrient deficiency, things like hair loss, brittle nails, or dry skin. And so you can probably imagine this is a big deal, right? Nutritional hunger is definitely something to worry about because if your body isn't getting the right stuff, your whole body is going to suffer and you're just not going to feel good. And that's why the best way to overcome nutritional hunger is to focus on making sure that you're getting the right nutrients from the right foods in a way that tastes good to you. It means, again, choosing foods that are high in healthy fats and especially high in nutrient-dense protein. Meat, especially red meat, it's the most nutrient-dense food that you can eat. And then low in carbohydrates, but also foods that are as fresh and unprocessed as possible, right? As close to the way God made it, as possible. So that means making sure you're getting variety in your diet, not just eating the same thing every single day. It means finding lots of recipes that you really enjoy and that have lots of flavor, but don't have all the added sugar and the vegetable oils and the toxic ingredients and the processed crap, right? That's going to help with the nutritional hunger. So that's hunger number two. And that brings us to the third type of hunger, what I like to call emotional hunger. <laughs> and this is the hunger that we tend to experience when we're feeling stressed or lonely or bored. It's that feeling of needing something to fill the, vo fill the void, even when our bodies aren't actually hunger hungry. And we've all experienced this type of hunger before as well, right? It's, it's the hunger that has us reaching for the ice cream when we've had a bad day or the bag of chips when we're feeling lonely or stressed or right? Like there's something going on. You have a big fight with your husband or with your mom and, and all of a sudden you want to eat an entire pizza even when you're not actually physically hungry. But here's the thing. Emotional hunger is not actually the same as physical hunger. It's not a biological response to a drop in blood sugar. It's a psychological response to our emotions. And that means that no amount of food will ever actually satisfy our emotional hunger, right? That's going to keep coming. So how do you know if you are experiencing emotional hunger? Well, here's a few things to look for. First, you will notice that you're eating even when you're not physically hungry. And second, you'll probably notice that you're craving specific types of food, like ice cream or chips, things that you associate with comfort. And finally, you'll probably notice that you're experiencing other symptoms of emotional distress, right? Stress, anxiety, sadness. And the key to identifying emotional hunger is really to become more aware of your feelings and your triggers. You need to ask yourself, am I actually hungry or am I trying to fill some other need? And if you find that you're dealing with emotional hunger, especially a lot of emotional hunger, then the best thing that, that you, you can do, honestly, is to find healthier ways to cope with your emotions that don't involve food. And Obviously, there's a lot more that I could say about this topic, but I've actually done an entire episode just on emotional eating. So if you haven't listened to that one and this is an issue for you, you might want to go back and check that one out. But to sum it up, the more that you can find non-food related ways to soothe yourself and to deal with your emotions, the better off you're going to be. Because the truth is that with with food, it's probably going to make you feel better in the, mo in the moment, right? It's going to give you that dopamine hit that you're looking for, but it's not actually going to solve anything. And it's just going to lead to more weight gain and more feelings of shame and guilt. So emotional hunger, that is hunger type number three. And that brings us to the fourth type of hunger, what I call habitual hunger. And this is the, this is the hunger that we experience out of habit rather than actual physical need. It's it's that feeling of needing to eat at a specific time or in specific circumstances, even when our bodies aren't physically hungry. And probably we've experienced this type of hunger before too, right? This, so this is the hunger that has us always getting a snack at 3 p.m. every day, even when we already ate lunch and had a big lunch and we're not actually hungry. It's the hunger that has us 
eating a big bowl of ice cream before bed because that's what we've always done. And the thing is that habitual hunger, again, it's not the same as physical hunger. It's not a biological response to a drop in blood sugar. It's what, you know, we eat dinner every night at six o'clock or whatever it is. It's a psychological response to our habits and our routines. And again, that means that no amount of food is actually going to satisfy that habitual hunger. So how do you know if you're experiencing habitual hunger? Well, first, you'll probably notice that you're eating at the same times every day or in certain circumstances, even when you're not physically hungry. Or you might notice that you're craving specific types of food at a certain time. Like my dad always has to have a cookie with his cup of coffee at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? Like always, that's his habit every single day. He can't not have his Big Newton or whatever it is at 10 o'clock every single day for the last 50 years. So you, you're you always craving these certain types of food at a certain time or you associate certain foods at a certain time of day. And then you might also notice that you're experiencing some of the other symptoms of hung- hunger, things like a rumbling stomach or lightheadedness, even when you know you shouldn't be hungry, right? Because your habit is telling you, oh, this is the time that I always have this thing. But the good news is that habitual hunger is probably the easiest type of hunger to overcome simply by changing your habits and your routine. If you can get into the habit of doing something else at that time, whether it's taking a walk or doing a quick workout or drinking a cup of herbal tea, right, or finding a new way to relax or reward yourself, then you'll find that this type of hunger, you can actually change your habits. And if you're trying to lose weight, then this is definitely a type of hunger that you're going to want to focus on overcoming because honestly, it can be a big roadblock to your success. So be aware of your habits and your routines and then try to find a way to change them if you're struggling with this type of hunger. So that is the fourth one, habitual hunger. The fifth type of hunger that we often experience is what I call environmental hunger. And this is this is the type of hunger, it's similar to habitual hunger, right? It's triggered specifically by your environment. So whatever's around you. So it might not be something that happens all the time, but maybe somebody is baking fresh baked cookies, right? Which my teenagers like to do a lot. Maybe it's seeing a dish of candy on your coworker's desk. Maybe it's the sound of somebody crunching on a bag of your favorite potato chips. But environmental hunger can also be triggered by a specific location or situation, going to a party or to a movie theater where you always want to eat popcorn, right? Or to a sporting event where you're like, give me the garlic fries. (laughs) It's the type of hunger that happens when you're not even necessarily thinking about food, but then you see it or you smell it and suddenly that's all you can think about. And the thing about environmental hunger is that it can be really, really hard to resist because it often feels so overpowering. But that also means that usually the best way to overcome environmental hunger is to simply remove yourself from the environment that's triggering it or to be prepared for the environment that you know is going to trigger it. So if you're at work and someone has a candy dish on their desk that's constantly calling your name, then maybe it's moving your desk or taking a different route so you don't have to walk past it. If you're at a party or a social event and you're feeling triggered by it, Maybe it's go outside for a breath of fresh air, right? Or find a different room to hang out. Don't hang out by the food table. If you find yourself constantly tempted by the smell of fresh baked cookies, then maybe it's closing your door, turning on a fan, or lighting a candle or something else. Uh, Finding some way of distancing yourself, right? Sometimes not. that's not always possible. But maybe it's just distracting yourself for a few minutes until the craving passes. Sometimes all it takes is that momentary distraction to help you refocus and move on. But that's the fifth type of of hunger, environmental hunger. The sixth type of hunger that we often experience is actually not hunger at all. It's thirst. Because sometimes when we think we're hungry, we're actually just thirsty. And while you might think that that would be an easy thing to distinguish, the reality is that the symptoms can be very similar. You might feel a little weak or lightheaded or your stomach might be growling. And so that's actually why the best thing that you can do if you're trying to determine whether you're actually hungry or just thirsty is to start by drinking a glass of water. If the feeling goes away, then you are just thirsty, and then you know it's not true physical hunger. And honestly, even if you do find that you're truly physically hungry, it's still a good idea to make sure that you're staying well hydrated because that's going to just help everything, right? It helps your body function better, and it makes it easier to lose weight in the long run. So that's the sixth type, thirst. And that brings us to the final type of hunger, what I would probably call addictive hunger or true cravings. 
And this is the hunger that we experience when our bodies are craving something that we're addicted to, like sugar or carbohydrates. It's that feeling of needing to eat more and more and more of those foods, even when our bodies aren't actually hungry. And I think that this is probably the most dangerous type of hunger because it's the hunger that we have the hardest time controlling. And honestly, I think so many foods these days have been created to make them as addictive as possible, right? I've done a whole episode on that, how the the additives that they're putting in food these days to, to literally make it as addictive as possible. And so we think to ourselves, like, I'll just have one cookie. And the next thing you know, you've eaten the entire box. But the food companies have created, have the, put scientists to make you want to eat the entire box. But this is the thing that you have to understand. Addictive hunger is not the same as physical hunger. It is not a biological response to a drop in blood sugar, but a chemical response to our addictions. And that means that no amount of food will ever actually satisfy that addictive hunger. We'll always want more and more and more. We'll always want that next dopamine hit. So how do you know if you're experiencing addictive hunger? Well, the things to look out for is that you're craving specific types of food, right? Cookies or bread or other processed foods that you tend to associate with your addictions. Second, you might notice that you're eating more and more and more of those foods, even when you're not actually physically hungry. And then what you'll also probably notice is that you experience other symptoms of addiction, like withdrawal or cravings when you're not having those things. But there's good news here too, guys, that that there are actually a few really great ways to overcome addictive hunger and true cravings. The first strategy is to just try to wait it out, right? True cravings are often triggered by your hormones and they will usually only last about 15 minutes. So if you can find a way to distract yourself for just a little bit of time, sometimes the craving will just go away on its own. Second strategy is to try eating a small piece of something that tastes very different from the food that you're craving. So if you're craving something sweet, eating a piece of cheese, right? If you're craving something salty, have a tiny piece of dark chocolate. And sometimes this can help to satisfy the craving without derailing your progress. The third strategy is to practice what I like to call planned indulgence. And this is where you allow yourself to have a small portion controlled version of the food that you're craving, but only if it's a food that you absolutely love and it's truly worth it to you. And this can be a great strategy for when you're craving something that's not necessarily unhealthy, but might be higher in carbs or calories than you'd like to eat on a regular basis. So for me, this might mean if I'm really, really craving like chocolate, right, then I'll allow myself to have just one piece, but it's really, really good stuff, like 70% dark chocolate. Or same thing with like mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. They are my favorite food in the whole world. And I love them. And so if I'm going to make them, I'm going to plan it. But I'll usually have a small amount of the mashed potatoes and then a large amount of whatever else we're having so that I can still get a little bit of that yummy mashed potato uh, piece in there. And then the final strategy for dealing with, with cravings is to simply practice moderation, right? The truth is that you don't have to completely eliminate all the foods that you love from your life forever. You just have to find a way to enjoy them in a way that doesn't completely derail your progress. (sighs) Okay, so now that you know what these seven different types of hunger are, how do you actually recognize them? And how do you know if you're experiencing one type of hunger or a combination of several different types of hunger? And more importantly, what can you actually do about it? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Pay attention to your body. Listen to what it's trying to tell you and be mindful of the different symptoms and the different signals that you might be experiencing. So for example, if you're feeling that gnawing, empty feeling in the pit of your stomach, that could be a pretty good sign that you're experiencing physical hunger. But if you notice that you're also feeling lightheaded or dizzy, maybe that's a sign that you could be experiencing nutritional hunger as well. Or if you find yourself reaching for that bag of chips, even when you're not physically hungry, that might be a pretty good sign that you're experiencing emotional hunger or a craving. So, but here's what I'll tell you from my own experience. The best way to actually overcome all of these different types of hunger is to eat. Yeah, to eat, to stop depriving yourself, right? To stop falling into this trap that we have been so ingrained in our society of thinking that if you want to lose weight and you want to get healthy, you have to restrict your calories or cut back on the quantity of food you're eating. You don't. And that is always going to be a recipe for disaster, 
The reality is that as long as you are eating the right foods, the healthy fats, the nutrient-dense proteins, and the whole foods that are low in sugar and carbohydrates and free of all that processed junk that's literally designed to make us crave it more, you can basically eat as much as you want. Because like I said at the beginning, a healthy weight loss actually has nothing to do with calories and everything to do with your hormones. So when your body is getting what it needs, right, you're getting the right nutrients because you're feeding it with whole foods and nutrient-dense foods and that are low in carbohydrates, low in all the processed stuff that was causing the insulin resistance and causing your hormones to be completely out of whack. When When your body gets what it needs, your hormones are able to stabilize and that triggers your body to be able to release fat, right? It goes out of crisis mode and into fat burning mode. Now, does that mean that you won't still sometimes struggle with emotional eating or breaking those long-established habits or being tempted by that fresh that pan of fresh-baked cookies that smells so good, right? Of course, there will still be moments. But if you're eating the right way and you're allowing yourself to eat plenty of really good food and you're not depriving yourself, those moments are going to be the exception, not the rule. And that's a big deal. In fact, it's everything. Okay. So that's about everything that I have for today's episode. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it gave you some good food for thought. And also, don't forget to join me in the Thinlicious Facebook group at noon Eastern time today for our big announcement, or you can join me on Instagram as well. You can tune into this podcast tomorrow. I will be um, releasing a special announcement episode tomorrow if you can't make it live. But in the meantime, if you found this helpful, please be sure to pass this episode along to anyone else you know who might be interested in. And if you have a moment, I would love it if you would leave a review on this podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you like to listen. And then I will see you back here very soon.